I have one shot in mind. This whole thing is hinging around one shot. The driving, the setup, the prep, the planning, all for one shot. The plan was to take a shot from Christie Pitts Park, lining up the moon directly atop the CN Tower. The moon itself was supposed to be huge and pinkish in hue. Composition-wise, it's a photographer's dream. Whether or not I could pull it off is a different story. All right, in terms of packing, I mean, obviously I've got my trusty 1DX. I still love this thing. I don't care how many cameras come out. It's just a great camera. So you've got all your standard camera gear. The only thing in here I really need is, well, nothing. Actually, what I do need is right over here, this guy. This is a 70 to 300. This thing is an absolute piece of junk. It's like a $400 lens. It is not a good lens. I probably wouldn't recommend anyone buying this lens, but that being said, I'm no major superstar YouTuber and I can't afford to go out and just buy $15,000 lenses whenever I need to take one photograph. Okay, so the gear list is actually pretty simple. If I really wanted to break it down further, all I need is the tripod and the 70 to 300 lens. But again, I just bring my whole kit because you never know. You never know what's gonna happen. Maybe some supermodels are in the park waiting and they're like, hey, do you have an 85 millimeter portrait lens that you can take our picture while we wait for the moon? Hell yeah, I do, because I planned that. Speaking of planning, let's actually plan out the shot we're going there for. Although it would be nice if some supermodels just approach me because of my camera. Having done some astrophotography and planning some shoots that required specific planning, timing, positioning, I think I knew what needed to be done. All right, so we're working with the PhotoPills app. It is a little bit intimidating if you've never used it before, but if you're into astrophotography, landscapes, sunsets, it is such a powerful tool and I highly recommend you download and, and play with it and learn how to use it because if you can use it properly, it's gonna take your photos to the next level. I'll tell you that for free. We are focusing on the CN Tower and the goal is to have that moon directly above it. We have to plan times and locations accordingly. So we're gonna type in CN Tower here. Next thing we wanna do is we're actually gonna take this little black pin and put it at the CN Tower. So if you scroll through, you can actually see on the map where the moon is gonna be, where it rises above the horizon and sets below the horizon. Now, the next thing we have to do is take our red pin, we'll go to load and we'll type in Christy Pitts. And that's where we're gonna be. Now that, because we've put that black pin down, we know where the CN Tower, where our target is, and where we're gonna be shooting from. Now, we're not gonna be shooting from this little building, more likely right in the middle or up on this hill over here so we can get the best view of the tower. Now we can see here that we've got that blue line. We know where this, the moon is at that particular time at 10 o'clock, but we have to make sure that that blue line intersects directly with that dotted line. That's showing a direct view of the CN Tower from our location. So we're gonna fast forward in time a bit, approximately. 10:23 p.m. At 10:23 p.m. tonight, the supermoon will be directly above the CN Tower. All that's left to do now is pack up and head down. Okay, so a bit of a minor issue, which is actually a major issue. I have no car, it's still at the mechanic, and I don't know how I'm gonna get down there. So, it's time to rely on a little bit of help from a friend. All right, I was actually able to secure a vehicle, but I already called in this favor, so I'm gonna have to break the bad news to him. 
probably not going to go well. Hey, buddy. Well, well, well. Look who decided to put on some pants. Yeah, uh, by the way, um, I actually got a car, so I don't need you to drive me. Are you kidding me right now? N no. I changed around my whole day for this, so I can help you go down to wherever the you need to go, do your action with your friends, and now I gotta go home, which is right around the corner, not very far, but Dan, this is You guys think he's mad or what? Okay, that uh, that went well. I think that went okay. Check out my new whip. Load up. So, what do you guys think of my whip? Should I uh, should I trade in the Jeep or keep the Wrangler? Also, it's not safe to vlog and drive, so I'm gonna put the camera away now. Please enjoy this clip of American Dad. Maybe, baby. That's fun to say. Maybe, baby. Well, before we go shoot the moon, just had to pick up an old friend and a guest on the vlog before. You might recognize him if you're an old school follower. Oh, hey. Who are you? I'm good, how are you? I said, who are you? I'm locked out of the car. Who oh, are you? nice to meet you locked out of the car. Come on in. Hey, I'm Alex. We were going to go shoot the super moon. Uh, comes around once every so often, and we we're hoping to get a 99.8% full moon uh, right over top of the CN Tower. We made it to Christy Pitts. It is dark. You can see the CN Tower and kind of the moon peeking through. Um, but we are an hour early, so we're gonna just chill. We had a couple spots mapped out, but we ended up going back to the, the spot that we originally planned, right near the, the corner intersection that we had selected. In order to get the super moon directly above the CN Tower from the eye line that we were at, we had to wait till exactly 10.23 p.m. At that point, the moon would have been composed right above the CN Tower, making for a wicked photo. Okay, so we found our spot just above this baseball diamond over here. I'm gonna bust out the 300 millimeter lens, try and get nice and tight on the CN Tower, set it up on the tripod, maybe take a few test long exposures, and uh, hopefully it turns out, but that moon has gotta come out from behind that cloud. Look at it, it's just hiding there. You can see it, it just wants to come out. The moon at one point was really, really pretty. It was full, it was vibrant, it was ready to go, but it wasn't in the position we were hoping for. And sometimes it would poke out just a little bit or it would light up the clouds in a nice way or we thought maybe a certain set of clouds had an opening in it. That anticipation was really cool and I planned the angles, did the math, calculated everything I possibly could have done that was in my power. And lo and behold, Oh man, it's completely gone now. So there's the CN Tower. The moon was like just up there before. It's kind of behind the clouds right now, but hopefully it comes back up. Okay, so the moment of truth has come. Currently there is zero moon in the sky, but we're gonna set up the tripod, frame up the shot, and hope for the best. At 10.23, the exact time of the shot, it was blacked out. Like the clouds were so thick, you couldn't even see the shape of the moon, the outline, the light that it casted. It was just an unfortunate series of events. Again, something entirely out of my control. Now, having the experience that I have and the skill set that I have, I decided to create a composite image. Now, the image on screen is not one single shot, it's two shots. I took a shot of the moon when it was clear. I took a shot of the CN Tower where the moon should have been uh, above it and using Photoshop I've just merged the two together to give you viewers an example of what I was going for and to show you that despite the fact that it didn't work out exactly as I had hoped, there's still alternative solutions. Maybe some might view it as cheating but I think it's, uh, it's a good illustration of what I was trying to go for. The takeaway that I, I gained from this is that it doesn't always work out but that doesn't discount or disqualify the process. It's a great lesson for anyone who wants to get into photography and, and sees all these people online taking photos that 
always turn out perfect. There's always an amazing sunset. We went to this epic location at sunrise and caught the most beautiful clouds, but that's not reality. It doesn't always work out perfectly. I think even though I didn't get the shot that I had set out for, it was definitely worth it. And you know, one day that shot will come. I learned you just have to be patient. That's a huge one, right? Like sometimes you can go to find the perfect shot, but the perfect shot kind of has to find you.